So then if it's contracted all day and then we go and we're standing, we're either running or pelotoning or trying to do explosive movements, uh, we are trying to lengthen a muscle that has been shortened all day. All day, just like <laughs> this. And then you're asking it to go. My back hurts. <laughs> <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> The, one of the p points that I wanted to talk about today was, okay, I bent over to pick up something. I bent over to pick up my child or to grab my dog or to get put my shoe on, right? And my back blew out. I had back pain. And what I wanted to talk about today was not that, it wasn't that action that caused your pain, right? It was the other things that we do in our day to day that was a cumulative effect that eventually led to the reason that we had pain in the first place. You know what I mean? So maybe your back pain is your symptom, mm -hmm. right? But your lifestyle, your lack of mobility, you know what I mean? Your sleeping position, your workstation ergonomics are the root cause of, of your course, pain. Yes. And as a therapist, right, as a doctor, if I don't assess and work on the root, then I'll be, I'll just repetitively be working on the symptoms all day, right? Let's take it from a personal training standpoint, right? You have a client, they come in, let's say shoulder for an example. Mm -hmm. They say, coach, I have shoulder pain. I can't, I can't do overhead pressing. You're doing all of this banded work, all of this mobility stuff. Come to find out they sleep on that shoulder every single night, mm -hmm. right? We don't fix the root. We don't ask questions to get down to the root we'll never be able to really help these people long term, which in turn affects me, it affects you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this was an important topic. And, and you know, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I first started coming in here, and I remember you helping me with my shoulders, speaking of shoulders, right. because my lats were too tight. Right. Sometimes you just don't think about it. Sure. Right, because it just doesn't click. Mm. And I think that is what is so important for people to learn Th that how everything is just tied together. Yeah, absolutely. Right? right? So going back to that, having tighter lats led to some lack of mobility on the shoulder, and over time that causes pain. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, first we talked about, you know, how, you know, you have to try to find the root cause, right? Once you find the root cause, right, then we can talk about how different parts of the body affect the area that you're feeling pain. So we can first talk about maybe the lower back as an example, then maybe we can talk about the shoulder, right? So let's start with the lower back because it's probably the most common area that I treat Absolutely. is lower back pain, you know what I mean? And more often than not, people are coming in with lower back pain that didn't occur from a specific episode or trauma, right? It's not like, hey, I fell down the stairs and I have lower back pain. It's, I've been dealing with lower back pain for weeks, months, years, mm -hmm. and I don't really know how it started, right? So then we kind of dive a little bit into, you know, what do you do in your day to day? The you lifestyle. Know? Right. Mo most people live a relatively sedentary lifestyle, right? Meaning the majority of us sit for mm -hmm. extended periods of day, and then we may be active, right? So we're going from zero to 100, right? Without a, a 50, you know what I mean? Now we can go and we can stretch a little bit, but we have to identify what exactly are, are we stretching and why are we stretching these things and how is this gonna affect us, right? Mm -hmm. So like you know, you know, the muscles that are gonna be the most affected in the lower back as a result of the lifestyle that we usually live are really threefold, right? The psoas or the hip flexors, right? Mm -hmm. Now, speaking of that one, a lot of people don't know that the hip flexor muscle actually attaches to the lower back Going from the back, yeah. And then attaches to the front of the hip. It's the muscle that's contracted when we sit. So then if it's contracted all day, and then we go and we're standing, we're either running or pelotoning or trying to do explosive movements, uh, we are trying to lengthen a muscle that has been shortened all day. All day, just like <laughs> this, and then you're asking it to go. My back hurts, <laughs> yeah. why? It's funny you said that, because a couple of months ago, I was covering this topic, and I was trying to raise more awareness towards hip flexors, because even though when we open our Instagrams and Facebook, there's nobody, nobody right. 
talking about these little things. Mm -hmm. Maybe few, mm -hmm. but most of the, the feed is just filled with squats, how to do squats, leg press, leg extension, deadlifts, mm -hmm. bench press, mm -hmm. biceps, mm -hmm. or some crazy HIT workout, mm -hmm. right? But nobody gets down to the nitty gritty yeah. of how the body works. What happens when deadlifts goes wrong? Yeah, yeah. Right? Do you even know where hip flexors are? Right. You wake up in the morning, you're sitting down, driving to work, you're mm. sitting, mm. you get to work, you're sitting, mm. you're going back home in your car, you're sitting, right? Right. Then you get home, you eat, and then you go to the gym. Like, okay, cool, now I'm going to move. Right. So all day of sitting mm. on that muscle that is mm. tight, you're asking it to go from... So that is why I bought that book called uh, Becoming a Supple Leopard. That's right, it's a good one. So it's like, how can these animals mm -hmm. just sit mm -hmm. and within mm -hmm. one millisecond, mm -hmm. they can just like... Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Go crazy. Yeah, and, and the reason that that is, is because becoming a supple leopard means really maintaining, right? So it's the kind of thing that if you are putting in a little bit of work each day, then you don't need to put in as much in one sitting yep. as if you're not doing it, right? Staying ready, right? Staying prepared, keeping regular mobility and maintaining it is the name of the game. You know, it's funny about the hip flexor because when I was in school, I took this course called Active Release Technique, right? Okay. And one of the releases that they showed us was the hip flexor. And I remember the professor talking about how he referred to this muscle release as the practice builder. So I raised my hand and I said, uh, why, do you, why are you calling this the practice builder? And he said, because a lot of people will go to chiropractors with lower back pain and people will keep on adjusting their lower back, the back right? Yes. But they're not releasing the hip flexor. And when you release it and these people uh, uh, immediately get relief that they haven't been getting, well, then they're going to go around town talking about how amazing you are and that all these people got to come in. So I said, OK, OK, OK. You know, so I open up a practice. Right. And I start releasing this muscle. And exactly what he said is exactly what I'm finding where people have been going and getting repetitive treatments or doing the same thing yep. over and over. And they may be getting adjusted. Right. And this is what we're talking about working on the symptoms. Symptoms, mm -hmm. right? When the root, right, is the sedentary lifestyle leading to a tight hip flexor, yep. you release that. Now, not only are they getting better, right, but now they're staying better. And moving better. Like, I mean, it's, right. it's just so hand in hand, right? right. Um, there was something that I was uh, um, working on was I was talking about the mobility mm. and the movement. Right. How they go in hand in hand. Uh -huh. So talk about other muscle other than hip flexor. Yeah, so the second one that I think is big that, that you know, we see really common is the piriformis muscle, right? So a lot of people don't know this, but the piriformis muscle actually sits on top of where the sciatic nerve exit through the pelvis going down the leg, right? So the piriformis is AKA known as your sit muscle, right? So if we are sitting for the majority of the day, right? We go for long drives, our commute is long, whatever it may be. The piriformis is tight. It compresses on the sciatic nerve causing mm -hmm. sciatic-like symptoms. So when people come in here, they're like, Doc, I have a disc issue. I have sciatica. I don't know what to do, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's an easy it, fix. And they make it sound such a big thing. They do. They do. Like, I feel like certain words and certain things in, in social media is such a, like, like you're going to die kind of deal. Right. right. And when people right. say, oh, my God, I got right. I had sciatica. Google. Oh, don't something. Google. I'm going Google now. <laughs> yeah, don't Google your own symptoms because you will become your yeah, worst you're, enemy. You're going to die. <laughs> yeah. so, so talk about, uh, in a little detail, for somebody who doesn't know exactly yeah. where this muscle is. Yeah. Right? yeah. In layman terms. Yeah. So it's, liter it's literally located in, like, the center slash bottom part of your glute or your butt muscle, okay? okay? So when that muscle is tight, like I was saying, it compresses on this nerve and it can either cause localized pain right in the glute, it can cause shooting pain that mimics sciatica, right? Or it can also uh, pull us a little bit out of alignment and affect the pelvis as a whole by being tight, right? And it's a very easy muscle 
to work to be able to get the relief that you need, right? And again, that's why it's important to come into a place like Optimal Performance Rehab that not only works on the area of pain, not only gets you out of pain, right, but teaches you exactly what you what need you to do. do to maintain. Because of coach, like you know, there are some things in life that we can't change, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can say we're gonna get a standing desk. Maybe we can say we're gonna, you know, uh, you know, change the way that we sit in the car or something like that. But for the most part, we're not gonna change the fact that we sit, right? So my goal is to teach you what you need to do a little bit each day to be able to maintain the results that we achieve in here. And that's how you're really going to achieve, like you talked about, becoming a supple leopard, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's a lot of time, I feel like if people could realize that no matter what you do in life, it's a two-way street. Sure. Everything. Sure. A doctor-patient relationship, a trainer-client relationship, it's a two-way thing. Mm -hmm. You have to do your homework. Right. Goes both ways. Mm -hmm. You want to lose weight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. You train with me one hour a day. Even if you were training with me seven times a week, that's seven hours out of your 164 or 68 mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing the rest of the time? Exactly. Yeah. It is actually what you do with the rest of the time that will show you the results. Right. Same thing with, with you and the patient. They have to do their homework to make sure that they are seeing the results. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's just not fair to people like us when other people don't do their homework and go out there and say, yeah, I did the training, they didn't see any results. It's exactly. like, well, that's because you didn't do your homework. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I established that on session one, which is, you know, I'm gonna do my part, you're gonna do your part, and that's how we're really gonna get you to where you wanna be. Again, yeah. it's not just about your symptoms. It's not about, I have pain in my lower back. It's about, why do I have pain in my lower back? How are those things affecting my pain, and how can I fix them? Mm -hmm. So, what will be, I mean, I know I might be uh, cutting the script a little bit. What will be an easy fix? Or let's just not call it easy. Right. But let's say for somebody who is feeling a little sciatic pain, what can they do at home um, to resolve that? Yeah, so what we do is we build you a custom plan. I can't necessarily, while we may give exercises and, you know, stretches on our Instagram and stuff like that, the best thing for you to do is to come in and get an evaluation, right? Because there is no way for me to know exactly what the root cause of your pain is without giving you a proper evaluation. Once we do though, we build you a custom physical therapy and home program. We give you the tools, we teach you while you're in here, and it's pretty much all spelled out for you exactly how many reps to do, how many sets to do, what stretches to do based on the evaluation that we do. Look, coach, like you know, no two clients, no two patients are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Everybody's structure, everybody's lifestyle is a little bit different, right? So you don't cookie cut your training, right? I don't cookie cut my treatment plans, you know what I mean? Each person is tailored towards who they are, what they're capable of, and what their needs are, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's how we really are able to, you know, individually fix each person. We talked about the hip flexor, the piriformis. What's number three? In my opinion, it's the hamstrings. Uh, the hamstrings attach to the bottom of the pelvis. When tight, these hamstrings will pull on our, pull on our pelvis, causing imbalances, causing misalignments. Now, it is also a muscle that is relatively going to be contracted when we are sitting. Then we are going and we are trying to run. Like I said, Peloton is one of the more common ones. Explosive movements, squats, deadlifts, etc. These things are requiring um, hamstring engagement. You know what I mean? And that is causing misalignments in the body. And it's a very common muscle that can be worked on and more often than not, I find that patients are coming in with lower back pain and very tight hamstrings, one and the same. And, and you know, it's something that I've learned a long time ago about, there was this article that I was reading and talked about how the lower back pain is literally pain in the butt. Yeah. 
right? And, and it, it led to, talked about how tighter glutes, tighter hamstrings yeah. are the causes for the lower back yeah. pain. And it's the one thing that I find, for, for personally for me, no matter how hard I work my hamstrings mm -hmm. or how hard I stretch them, I could never really tell if they're good or not. Yeah. I find hamstrings to be elusive. Mm -hmm. Like quads, you know, when you get when you do a leg workout, mostly 90% of the soreness are in your quads. Right. Right? You don't feel a lot in hamstrings. Yeah, maybe you did a couple exercises for the glutes. The glutes will get more mm -hmm. sore too. I just find mm -hmm. hamstrings to be so elusive. Yeah. Uh, to where it's hard to contract them. Yeah. When you're doing lying hamstring curls. It's it's easy to stretch, but that feeling goes away. Sure. They get so back to normal. So Tell me a little about what, what can we do to figure out um, if hamstrings are really tight or how do, you, how do you make that call? Yeah, so pretty much what I do is the first thing is when they come in, I assess their uh, pelvic alignment, right? And if the pelvis is misaligned or has been rotated, you know, forward or up or any part of that, you have to remember the hamstring attaches to two places. One, the bottom of the pelvis. Two, the back of the knee. You know what I mean? So if the pelvis is misaligned, then that hamstring is being stretched in different positions that can be causing uh, pain, right? Either in the hamstring or in the lower back directly. What we do is we assess them, we muscle test them, right? Because like you know, a tight muscle is a weak muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one way to identify. And the second way is to identify is to, uh, actually, like I said, evaluate the hip itself. Once we determine which combination of muscles are causing your issue, then yes, we work on your site of pain, but then we also work on uh, you know, the root cause the root of the cause. pain, which is either one or a group of different muscles that is attributing to that area. Now, do you think it's easy to work on hamstrings than hip flexor? You know, all of these muscles are... are relatively easy to work on. If I had to pick one that was the hardest, right, it would probably be the hamstring just because it's a little bit deeper muscle and it's a bigger muscle. Mm -hmm. So the length of it makes it a little bit difficult. Also, when you have muscles that are attaching to bone themselves, the attachment site is a very common place of pain. And that can be a little bit more difficult. The hamstring, though, is interesting because the hamstring can be painful or tight from sitting. It can also be tight from dehydration. It's a mm -hmm. big muscle, and a yeah, lot of us don't hydrate enough. We have to remember that our bodies, our muscles, tendons, ligaments, made up of 80% water, right? Think about a sponge outside of the sink, right? When it doesn't have water on it, it's brittle, it's hard, yeah. it's immobile, right? But when it's been submerged under water, when it's hydrated, you can bend it, twist it, move it, pliability, you want. right? Yeah, that's a good uh, example. Same idea, same concept, right? Hydration is key specifically to the hamstrings um, for the pliability of it. It's funny, during the summer, I always tell my football players that I refer to summertime as hamstring season, right? Mm. Because 80% of the football athletes that come in here during the hot months are coming in here with hamstring strains, right? And majority of the time, these are student athletes, right, that are dehydrated. You know what I mean? And as soon as we start getting some electrolytes and start hydrating them, you start seeing that the pliability of the hamstring significantly increases. Their recovery time is less, right? And they're back in sport doing what they need to do. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.